Rick Graham, hello Dutch, I have a question, if I could get your take. How did deregulating wrestling hurt or help the business? Well, deregulating wrestling was because of the taxes that some state athletic commissions charged, and they didn't do anything. The state athletic commissions didn't. They were just a tax collector under a different name is all they were. I was in New Jersey once and they showed up and it's just like two or three guys that show up and they're having a good time. They get to go to wrestling and sit around and talk to the wrestlers and, and they can watch the show if they want to or not. And then they take a, they take your blood pressure just to, and that's actually just to show that they do something. They take your blood pressure and something else. I remember check one time prostate. I was, the one now? They check no, the they, prostate. They didn't bother. Only James, only you would come up with something like that. No, they did not jab <laughs> my prostate. I don't think so. But uh, one time I showed up and they wanted to put those little things they stick on you, you know, to take your, mm-hmm. and they put them all on me. Now, listen, everybody that knows me know that I'm a, a pretty hairy guy. So they would put them on, but they wouldn't work because they didn't get to, they had too much hair. And they said, well, we're going to have to shave you. I said, like shit. I said, I'm not going to go out there and look like connected dot. I'm not going to do that. Because you're going to shave it here and shave it there. And then when I, when you pull this off, I'm going to have like little bitty <laughs> shaved little circles around my front and my back. I said, it's going to look like crap. You, and I forgot. They said, well, we can't do it. And you can't work. I said, no, I'm going to work. And I got in a big argument with them. And they said, okay, just say he worked and l- let him go. That's so I get the payday. If they'd have put it down that I couldn't pass that, that deal because they couldn't, they couldn't get a, a check on me, you know, then, then they'd ask me and it'd be more trouble than what it was worth. So, but they, they let me go ahead and work without it, which I'm glad, but, but all they did was collect taxes. Like they would take like in New Jersey, I forgot what they took. Say you made $500 in a town or whatever. Well, they take like, I forgot what it was. I think they take like, 50%, not 50%, 5% of that, which is like 20, 25 bucks, which doesn't sound like a lot, but you know, 20, 25 bucks, you know, when they add that up with 30 guys on the card or whatever, that's quite a big pay. That's quite a good payday. They can just go over there and pick it up and they're paid right then. And they did nothing. They had no health insurance. If you got hurt, you're on your own or the, or the company has to pick it up. They didn't pay your health insurance. They didn't pay nothing. You just paid uh, taxes to them, and that and that's all they got. That's why Vince and I don't blame Vince. Vince fought them and, and won because they didn't do anything. Let me give so, you the quote. Let me give you the quote. In fact, uh, this is uh, from uh, this is from Independent.co.uk. A write up. February tenth, nineteen eighty nine, was the day the facade died, as in front of the state of New Jersey Senate on a bill to remove wrestling from the regulations that had been applied by the athletic commissions. Vince McMahon, representing the World Wrestling Federation, stated that professional wrestling should be defined as an activity in which the participants struggle hand in hand, primarily uh, primarily for the purpose of providing entertainment to spectators rather than conducting a bona fide athletic contest. With -hmm. these words, everybody's suspicions had been confirmed. Wrestling was not, in fact, a legitimate sporting contest. As a result, the bill uh, bill deregulated professional wrestling passed uh, by a vote of 37 to 1. Uh, In Mm -hmm. 1989, I don't know if you were in Continental or USWA or wherever it was, but what was the reaction on the lower leagues to Vince McMahon's uh, admission in public like this? Well, it was it was like, who wrote that note to us? That who was the guy that sent the question in? Oh, uh, Rick Graham. Rick. It hurt initially a little bit, but it's like saying, "Well, it's going to rain one day this week." You know, everybody knew it anyway. Now it was confirmed. It didn't really have that big of an effect. And now, even though we know all this stuff today, wrestling is as popular today. Are more popular now 
than it was then. See, there we were trying to work the facade that, oh, yeah, we were, were in there trying to kill each other. and But it's actually now that they know that it's for their entertainment, I think it's better. And and I don't know if it hurt that much then because the business was, it was in 1989, it was fading anyway. Yeah, I think it was only the W in America anyway. It was only the WWF that was still thriving. All the all the independents, all the territories were either gone w, or going. Was it W? Wasn't WWC still there? WC WCW. I mean, oh, yeah, but WCW and eighty nine were falling off as well by this point. It was only WWF that were thriving. Everyone else was suffering. And yeah, and the and the business was you know it was it was in the tank already. So we didn't really. It couldn't do much harm than what we've already done done to it ourselves. <laughs> so Vince at least straightened that out. I'll say that for him because, and it wasn't even his money. They were taking, the money was coming from the talent anyway. Like if they take, say, $25 off 500, you get 475, which ain't a bad payday for going out there for 10 minutes. And, but it was already in the tank anyway. It didn't do that much harm. Now, this question sort of leads on to this. So, Ursin de Roche. Dear Dutch, I really enjoy listening to you tell stories from the past, but when pro wrestling had a particular place in an American culture. But now, with the advent of the internet and social media and the proliferation of inside dirt sheets and websites giving away results and even future creative plans on YouTube channels like this one, breaking down the moves and showing you how it's done, should wrestling even exist in the 21st century. I know these people are making lots of money still, but from an enjoyment standpoint, it seems that wrestling was not meant for this day and age. Most of the time it is not entertaining, and I find myself mostly watching old footage like a number of long-time fans. Best to you and yours. What's his name? Oh, God, I've just switched the page around now. Uh, Ursin de Roche. Er, Ursin, I have never met anybody named Ursin. I read this question before and i said have i ever known anybody by the name of urson no well urson let me tell you does it need to exist in this day and age all it follows is the marketplace if it shouldn't exist they wouldn't be a market for it therefore they wouldn't be big cards in madison square garden they wouldn't be big cards in, in pay-per-views in baseball stadiums and football stadiums uh, uh, around the country. If it's not supposed to be, guess what? It won't be because, like I just said, we are – the people that put wrestling together, we don't dictate whether it goes or not. The fans do. So if the fans want to see it, they will come and see it. I think it's perfectly normal to have a, a pro wrestling uh, footprint in the country. It's one of the oldest sports. It is the oldest sport known to man, wrestling. Mm -hmm. But if it's not supposed to, it won't be there. It's like football. If you have a football game in a 50,000-seat stadium and 5,000 show up, guess what? It's not going. People just don't want it. So, and that's what we were talking about, just the, the the question previous to this one, that, you know, we don't we don't set the parameters for it. The fans do. So, yes, I, I do believe, and if you're watching older stuff, more power to you. I mean, watch what you like, because nobody is dictating to anybody what they can watch. And look at YouTube, all the old wrestling stuff on there. If YouTube didn't have a, a market for it, they wouldn't have it. So this this business is continuously uh, reinventing itself. Sometimes it's good. Sometimes it's not so good. Sometimes it's great. But sometimes we're we're always reinventing everything we do.